episode, we had successfully uploaded profile images for a user. However, today we're going to look at protecting certain file uploads from refile. So our user image or the profile image, we will allow users to download regardless of who they are. However, we're going to create a resume upload and we're going to protect that resume upload from being downloaded. So the first thing that we need to do is to take a look at this image and then see the URL address that it's creating. As you can see up here, we have our image downloaded and it's coming from a attachments URL that is automatically provided from the refile gem. It creates separate routes. So we're going to break this link so this link will no longer work. However, we'll need to substitute it with a different kind of link that will allow users to download the image if they have access or download the resume if they have access. So to get started, we'll go under our config initializers and we'll create a new file where we can set the refile to not auto mount the attachments routes. Instead, we're going to create our own routes so we can download the images or resume. Then we need to go into our routes file and under the resource users, we want to create a get action for the download. So each user will have a download action that will then download their profile image. So in our view, we need to get rid of this image tag attachment URL since the Rails file will no longer render that file. Instead, we need to create an image tag where we're selecting the user download path and we're selecting the user here. We can then go into our user's controller and create our download action. And I'll step you through this. So we're creating our instance variable on the user and then we're attaching the processor variable to the refile processor we're creating a temp file. We're setting the temp file to a bin mode or binary mode. And then we're writing the user profile, the image selecting read method. And we're writing this to the temp file. And then we rewind the temp file. We then create the image magic from the temp file. And then we go through the processor and then we're selecting fill and then selecting our size here. And then we close our temp file. The file here is where we still have our rendered image file that goes through the refile processor and the mini magic. We then send the file to the file path. So from this file here to the file path, disposition in line. And then you'll see here that we're setting the file name to the profile image file name. This file name comes from adding in a migration to our users table with the profile image file name, size, content type, which when you're using refile, this information will be added in automatically. So this way, whatever file was uploaded, we can then download it with the same file name. We can then go back to our application and refresh the page, and it looks like nothing changed, which is great. If we right click on our image and then copy image address, we can then paste it in to see that it still renders, but now it's rendering under the users to download. Depending on how you do your authorization, it can vary. However, in our case, I'm using Pundit. So after the user declaration here, if we add add authorized user, then this will perform an authorization on the download action of the user controller to see if the user who is requesting this has access to download the file. So in our Pundit user policy, I created a download method here, and I'm just checking if the current user is equal to the user that we are requesting. So if we go back to our application now, if we check the Jane Doe, who I'm currently logged in as, you'll see that the image still loads. However, if we go under John Doe and get a show, you'll see that the image does not load. Back on our show page, we can make a check here. So if we just, since we are using Pundit, we can check if the policy of the user is able to download then it will either display or not display this image tag. Going back to our application, if we refresh this, you'll see that the image tag no longer loads because the user is not authorized to download that image. One issue that may come up is if you're downloading something that's not a image, it's going to go through all of these different processes here. So what we can do is we can change our download action here to download image, we can add a download file. And this will grab the user, it'll authorize it to make sure that they're able to download the file, and then it'll pass in the user resume 
download path. And let's say resume is our file that we have uploaded and we want to protect that as well. And then of course we're calling in the file name of the user resume file name. This being the extra attributes that we created for the resume. Now doing something like this starts to get really complicated because you're starting to pollute your controller here with a lot of different actions. And while I do not really like this, it's fine doing it for one file, maybe two if needed. However, if you're gonna go beyond this, there's gonna be much better ways to handle something like this. You can extract your file downloading off to a separate controller, and then you can kinda combine it to check the file type, send the file passing in the parameter of the attribute that you need to download whether it's the resume or the profile image or something like that that'll keep your application much cleaner instead of creating a different action for each different attribute that you're wanting to download for while keeping the correct parameters around the security intact well that's all for this episode thank you for watching